Hi, and welcome back to Lecture 3 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, what we're going to be doing is looking at Gaussian elimination. This is a continuation of Section 1.2. Now, in our last lecture, we introduced Gaussian elimination, which is this procedure by which we take a matrix, use elementary row operations, and we put it into either echelon form or reduced row echelon form, depending upon what our problem will require. Now, we in our first lecture, we talked about our interest in solving a system to linear equations. Our last lecture just talked about manipulating a matrix. So our goal in today's lecture is to combine these two ideas. How does one use Gaussian elimination to solve system linear equations? Our secondary goal for today is to introduce some linear algebra software. This software you can use for your own uh, calculations and your homework. And in fact, some of our labs later on in the course will require you to use the software in order to answer some uh, application questions in linear algebra. So moving on, let's look at example one here where we have a system in linear equations. Okay, we have three equations, x1 minus 2x2 plus 3x3 equals 9. So we have three equations with three unknowns. And what we would like to do is be able to solve the system in linear equations. So let me just give you a quick rundown of how you would do this. So the first stage is to make the augmented matrix. So remember, kind of all the key points here are the coefficients and what things are equal to. So let me make my augmented matrix. So we have 1, minus 2, 3, 9, minus 1, 3. Now there's, there is no x3 in this second equation. So remember, I'll just put a 0 there to keep track of that. And that, this is equal to minus 4. And 2, minus 5, 5, and 17. So I end up with the augmented matrix. Sometimes I'll get rid of that. I don't know why I did that. Sometimes we put a little dashed line here, so just to kind of keep track of the fact that we have an augmented matrix. Now, what you have is to do next is take this augmented matrix and put it into echelon form using the procedure that we talked about last time. So this is good practice for you to keep track, uh, learn about Gaussian elimination, and I'll work out some of the details as we go on. So we're looking at the first column. We have a non-zero entry at the top, and we want to use that to make everything below it a zero. So we don't need to touch the top row. I want to get rid of this minus one, and fortunately I have a one above it. So what I can do is I can take row one and add it to row two. So I would get zero minus two plus three gives me one. Three plus zero gives me three, and nine plus minus four gives me five. Okay, and so just to keep track here, this is row one plus row two. Now I want to get rid of this two. How do I get rid of this two? Well, the way I can do that is take multiply this one by minus two and add it to two. All right, so really I want to do row one times minus two and add it to row three. So let's keep track of this, minus two, times 1 plus 2 is 0. Minus 2 times negative 2 is 4. Adding it to negative 5 gives me minus 1. Minus 2 times 3 is negative 6. I'm going to add 5, gives me minus 1. Minus 2 times 9 is negative 18, and I'm going to plus 17, which gives me minus 1. So that's the first step of my uh, reduction. And Gaussian elimination. And now I want to keep reducing because I'm not in echelon form. So I will move things over here slightly so we can see both equations at the same time. So now I want to take this matrix and now I have a 1 here and I want to get rid of this minus 1. So I will have 1, minus 2, 3, 9, 0, 1, 3, and now I want to take row 2 and add it to row 3. So when I do that, 1 plus minus 1 gives me 0. 3 plus minus 1 gives me 2. And 5 plus minus 1 gives me 4. Okay. So at this stage, I can stop because I've actually found the echelon form. And just to 
we don't need this information, but just let me circle where all the pivots are. Okay, these are our leading non-zero entries. Okay, so what we want to do now is remember we solve our system in linear equation. So let's just turn all of this back into equations so we can see that what we ended up with. So the first row tells me I have an equation x1 minus 2x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 9. The second equation gives me a second row gives me x2 plus 3x3 is 5. And then the last row gives me 2x3 is equal to 4. So you'll notice that what happens when we put things into echelon form is we're getting at the bottom we get equations with the fewest number of variables and then above it we'll get an equation with more variables and then we'll get an equation with more variables after that and hopefully after you put everything into row reduction form you'll get a, an equation like this at the bottom that's very easy to solve and we can use a procedure called back substitution in order to solve for x1 x2 and x3 Right, so let me make this a little bit clearer. Let's, let's give all of these equations numbers so we can keep track of them. So the bot last equation, equation 3, tells me that x3 has to be equal to 2 because 2 times x3 has to be 4. So now I'm going to substitute that information into equation 2. So that tells me that x2 plus 3 times 2 is 5. And I can rewrite that equation as x2 is equal to 5 minus 6, which is minus 1. Now I know what x3 and x2 is. And I'm going to use that information and sub it into equation 1. Right? So I have x1 minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2 is equal to 9. So let's simplify it. So I have x1, I have 2 plus 6, so I get 8 here. So I have 9 minus 8, which is equal to 1. So we get only one solution. And that solution is x1, x2, x3 is equal to 1, negative 1, and 2. Okay. Now let, let me just make a quick point here is that you should always be in the habit of taking your answers and just plugging them back in and just to make, make sure that it makes sense. Okay. So we know here we have 1, negative 1, and 2 is your answer. Let's plug some of those numbers in. So minus 1 plus 3 times minus 1, so I get minus 1 minus 3 is equal to 4. Oh, okay, it looks like it's true. So it looks like I found the right answer. I should, in theory, double check and make sure all of my questions are right. Okay. So here is another example. I Let me just pose the question right here. You've just seen an example of how to use the augmented matrix to solve a system of equations. Why don't you take a second to jot down your answer, and when we continue the next video, we'll talk about the answer to this particular problem.